Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north, and it's the second of my new series of videos titled What's Blooming in whatever month it is. And this month, obviously, it's April, so it's What's Blooming in April inside the greenhouse and out. Let's get started. And we're in. So we're going to start off in the warm side of the greenhouse and it's been a gorgeous week, it's been lovely and sunny all week and it's really made a big difference. Still quite cold at night, going down to frosty a couple of nights so that obviously brings its own problems. So we'll start off over here. Now this one here, this is a Epicat layer. Just excuse me while I grab the label. So let me put in a pop-up. So Epicat layer Volcano Trick uh, crossed with Lelio Catlayer Janet Sparkle. And that was bought at 21st of January. Um, let's try and get that label back in. It's like absolutely growing like wild, like really fast this because I mean that bloom is the second or third flower spike I've had on it. But these, can you see these growths here? They hadn't even started in January and normally from my limited experience so far anyway. Anything to do with cat lays is very, very slow. But this particular cross is definitely not in that category. They are really going for it. It won't surprise me if inside these growths here, if there isn't uh, some more buds coming. And by the time that that one's over with, they might come. Very, very sticky, lots of honeydew on it there, nectar. Not honeydew, nectar. Uh, so moving on, I think that's... Oh, I wasn't sure whether that was one of my daughter's blonde hers or a spider web. They get absolutely everywhere, her blonde hers and spiders. So yeah, a uh, little orange, no ID catlia, beautiful colour, very, very strongly scented. Really enjoyed this bloom. Only had one, I had... The first bloom was when I first bought it and it's not done anything since and then it, it, it popped this up. It did have two buds but it blasted one of them which was a shame and I do think that particular cat layer has some new growth coming at the bottom, some new roots there. I'm hoping, yeah, just there, I don't know if you can see there, it's struggling to focus on it. Just there anyway, some new roots much more interesting focusing on these blooms. So this is a new one for me. I've not produced that. There is one going over just there. So this is, uh, let's see if I can remember it. Um, I think it's Brassio, Lelio, Catlio, Xing Chong, Shang, Chicken Fried Rice with noodles. Something like that anyway. Um, let's grab the label. There you go, BLC Xing Fong Little Sun, Young Min Golden Boy. And I know quite a few YouTube orchid growers have this one, but I, I saw it there for sale in bloom. Gotta have that one, gorgeous one. And it's in a really strange pot here. And I really struggle, when you can't see the roots, I really struggle to know how wet it is. So I'm gonna get it out of that pot as soon as these blooms are over and uh, get it in one that I can see what's going on. I have struggled actually, and the same, the same with that one as well, I'll get it out of that pot. I've struggled with this this big one, this was one, I did a video on this, about how not to repot a catlia. It has actually now got new, new growths on it, there's a new one down there, there's a new root down there, a few new roots. It is happening, but obviously you can't see what's going on underneath. Now that might not be a problem if you're in a really hot country and you know that drying out is not going to be an issue but here uh, I, I really could do is seeing what's going on but I mean I, I haven't got a, a transparent pot that big unfortunately so that one we've just got to wait and see not really blooms but the, the Tredescanti are looking absolutely brilliant everybody seems to be really impressed with this maiden's blush nobody's seen this one before as it appears or a lot of people haven't seen it before it's a really really nice one and uh, um, if, if anybody's got any other different sorts of Tradescanti, I'd be interested in them. Yes, they are weeds in a lot of countries. Yes, they are invasive in a lot of countries. They don't really like to go below five degrees, so I'm told. Although, 
Uh, one of our subscribers, a lady from Greece, uh, did point out that she's got a 25-year-old Chadascantia that is uh, perfectly happy in frost and snow. And I guess, you know, the, the bigger the roots and the, 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 the deeper down the roots go, then the, the plant is a bit more tolerant, <laughs> get the words out, tolerant of these kind of temperatures. So yeah, so this is, this is a what's in bloom, so we'll try and focus on what's in bloom here. If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and you won't miss any updates. Multoniopsis there, it does have a scent to it, it's not very, very strong. There's a couple gone over there, I better get rid of those. Oh, well, that's only happened today, actually. Um, yeah, some of you might have known my struggles with this is the worst, worst Miltoniopsis in the world here, worst looking Miltoniopsis in the world. Since I got it into that pot, I'm hoping that we're going to get some roots on it, but this is kind of last chance saloon, this one. So I'm keeping my eye, I, I will repot it once the blooms are over so that I can actually see what's going on. Uh, I'm, it, it's very, very close to the fogger, it's not in the bright sunshine, so it's kind of getting the temperatures it wants, not absolutely precise. If it doesn't like uh, going down to 15 degrees Celsius at night time, if it can't cope with that, and if it can't cope with going up to 26, 27, then that's me out of the out of the game because I can't do any more than that. Uh, certainly, un you know, unless I get rid of some of the other plants or unless I pay for, for more heating. So we'll see. Let's see if it likes this spot. If it doesn't, then well, I can't think what else I'm going to do. You know, there might be another option, but at the moment let's let's just try and be positive and see if it works so that's all that's blooming over on that side let's kind of work our way along the mandevella so this is diplodenia sanderi and it had about six weeks without blooms on it but now you can see absolutely stunning red the very very deep velvety red and if you look all along the vine We've got buds even right up in the rafters there where it's beginning to twirl its well itself around the, the light fitting. It's got buds on it. So I'm really pleased to get that one back. Uh, just moving down, not quite in bloom yet, but my Zygopedalum is just about to burst forth, as is the Brassia. Uh, little rescue phalaenopsis though. Well, it's not a rescue one, it's a, an adopted one. My sister gave me that one, so that's, that's looking nice. And if we move along the Mandevella vine here, there's another one out there. They last absolutely ages, these blooms. They don't go over very quickly. They last for a number of weeks. Uh, then we come to the Thunbergia brownie, which has put numerous buds out there, uh, blooms out there. They do, they don't last very long, these. Um, when they go over, I kind of cut them back to the to the but they do keep coming finally this catlia this is my very first catlia and it's finally got a spike in it i've had this for two years and it's never done anything i've no idea what color it is no idea whatsoever and uh it was obviously a division from somebody's i can just see the bloom inside there i'll just see the bud it did put out one last year there and then it blasted and that's all i've seen for it so we'll, we'll just kind of go past the file very quickly that looks like it's been sunburned another file there this is another one that's going to come soon but again we're not doing what's nearly in bloom so we'll just whiz round and go into the cooler side which at the moment is exactly the same temperature as the warm side it's more at night time really when you see the differences so yeah i totally think that my Nepenthes, this is Nepenthes Gaia, G-A-Y-A. -A. I totally think these are as good as blooms. I'm trying to think which one might be a new picture. The older ones haven't got any liquid in them because they all came out when they were traveling. That's a new one. Yeah, that's, they kind of open up with their own, their own liquid inside them. It's lovely colored markings on the uh, this ladder bit here, nice and hairy. Um, peristome, not that big, but I'll show you a big one in a, in a second. Um, again, another about to bloom. So I've had this Cephalotis follicularis for a couple of years now. I can't 
think, I don't think it's flowered before for me anyway, and I can't think what they look like, but that's about to do do its thing there. I don't think somebody's letting fireworks off. <laughs> um, it's put loads and loads of new pictures on, and you can see lots of little ones that are just about to come. Um, that's probably ready for another repot. It, it, it did have a repot. Again, I don't think I'll have written it on because it's... Oh, there you go, I did, yeah. January 2018, so it's probably ready for its uh, biannual repot there. Um, kind of in bloom, so th these are my little sundews, mixed sundews. You can see where flies have attached to there and where it's kind of curling up. But the, that is a bloom, or it's about to bloom. I don't think it'll be anything spectacular. But um, it's an interesting thing. I could like I could do some more sundews actually. This was like a tray of mixed seedlings, and it's they've never really. I've tried to transplant them, and they just don't seem to transplant very well for me. I'm not sure what what I'm whether I'm doing something wrong because these can go much bigger. But obviously, it's either a case of I either thin them out or because they're all, they're not all the same. They are all the, some of them are different. Uh, some of them are more like of a like a a spatula shape at the end some of them are quite round rounded some of them are elongated it's it's something that really i should have i don't think i'd buy like a like a mixed seeds again really and if i did i'd definitely uh, sow them a lot more thinly the there's a fern that's just about to come into leaf there's some new leaves on that's a terrace critica fern and the Master Valley Rignia, yep, still in bloom there. That's that's just opened another new one. I'll we'll just move along to the stripes. Are looking much much better now since I discovered a little mite that was munching away on them. Uh, the first of the blooms. I'm just going to move this so you can see it because it's quite backlit. So this is Streptocarpus Pink Layla, the first of many many blooms. And you can see how healthy the leaves look now. So they are in, they're in the correct compost, which I don't think they were originally. So that it's like a peat-based compost and perlite, which is what they like. And they'll all start, you know, that's that's bringing one up. There's another one over there that's popping up its its uh, flower spikes. I, this is much earlier than last year. I'm sure it was it was like mid-May last time before I got them, and we're now kind of mid-April. But like I say, I only just realized that there was a little mite munching on the leaves if you want to look it up it's a uh, common name is cyclamen mite i can't remember the the latin name for it but once you do it's definitely worth spraying and it does make a difference the uh it, they, they really do pop you know like come back strongly so this is my other nepenthes this is nepenthes burkii this one is freshly opened that's only opened this week and you can see it's quite pale compared to one of the, the the older ones and the peristome is a really nice you know, they always feel quite cardboardy to me like somebody's pre like made them and it, it's got it's already got like that much liquid in it just by just by itself just did that itself an older one there and you can see how dark red the peristome goes it does make you want to mull with it really like them quite uh, sticky on the back so my amaryllis haven't bloomed yet, but you can see this is going to be a whopping bloom. Can't wait for that to come. That's going to be a nice big one. Uh, the, um, the pings, I've only got one ping, I've got two. That one's full of flies, that's doing its job there for me. I've got another, another ping actually, a little tiny one there. I was hoping, I mean, it, it did say that the, this was like it's winter rosette, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's not very exciting as it is at the moment. I'd like it to, to do something and improve. So moving along to Dendrobium <coughs> very older. Still hanging on there. Would you believe I've actually had this now in bloom, full bloom since the 12th of December. Now, I, did, I saw somebody's video the other day, and so oh, I think it was Nina actually, Nin, Ninja's Orchids. Ninja's Orchids, I think. Go and subscribe to her channel if you're not already. I'm sure many of you have. So <clears throat> she said her blooms on hers last about a week, and then it keeps coming with new ones. Like I say, mine, this has been in full bloom since the 12th of December. 
Now, I can't say I've noticed that the blooms are going over every week. It could be that they are, and I'm just not noticing, and that it's just sending more up. Um, it's getting to the end of it now. You know, I've had my Dendrobium kingianum has come into bloom and gone out of bloom again and been shoved back under the bench, and this is still still coming. Uh, another strep about to open there. I don't know what it is, but I'm not I'm not going to spoil the surprise because I'm sure at some point I'll be showing you them in the full glory. Now this is I've only got one begonia in here. Now that's that is a bloom spike. I don't know what they're going to look like. I mean this particular one you, you buy it for its leaves. And it's fabulous trunk. Look at the trunk on that. Just lift it up. It's kind of a stem really, isn't it? I don't know if you can see it there. Just look at the detail. It kind of reminds me of a giraffe. <coughs> Made a fantastic photo on Instagram, that one did. And the new leaves. I think they're just as nice as blooms, so I'm going to show them. So this one is again it's another about to bloom some of them did blast this is uh sorry about that so this is my dendrobium stardust firebird it it caught off the dendrobium nobly star class i think it had some little i think they were red spider mites there was something on it anyway it, it could even have been the cyclamen mite because it does go on to all sorts of plants and these blooms, you can see how much nicer that bloom is than when I last showed them. You know, it, these have now got uh, a lovely innards. <laughs> uh, this is labellum, isn't it? The labellum, the lip. A lovely lip with a nice yellow throat and it's kind of tinged with, with pink or purple, whichever you think that l looks like. And what was happening was as soon as they opened up that labellum was was kind of all brown so i'm thinking that it was either the spider mites sucking all the, the the sap out of it or which i think was probably more likely the case it had this little mite on it and it was also on the the stack the uh, dendrobium stardust firebird so some of those blooms did actually or some of those buds did blast it's got plenty more coming so i've got high hopes for it and they're, they're on several of the canes and um, the nobly star class has got absolutely tons of like new nubbins of buds coming on it so that's that uh, the one that ed gave me the fragment petty man's worthy eye it's going to bloom at some point i expect it's going to take a while um some people were asking about my uh, it's that long since i talked about them i forgot what they were called uh, Plumeria, this is a hybrid, hybrid 7, imaginatively called Plumeria hybrid 7. Um, they have finally come back into leaf, I've got them through the winter, kept them on the dry side and you can see that one is coming back into leaf. Well that's not what's in bloom so I'm digressing there. Pelagoniums, don't, <laughs> I have a, a bit of a problem with pelagoniums in the greenhouse because I try to keep humidity high and they obviously don't like humidity. Uh, but they do kind of, you know, they, they, they manage, they carry on. Now this one, there's a couple of blooms going over there. I do have, I only realised this recently, it actually says what it is in the pot, and I did look it up on the side of the pot. It gives you a price. I can move my finger. So this is Pelagonium Grandiflorum Don Diego, 5 .99. And I got that one, and I think that one is actually a cutting of another one over here. There's the other one. I mean, that's, you know, as far as flower power goes, that's as good as it comes. And they're very, very easy to propagate if you want to get a few more of them. Uh, another Streptocarpus just come into bloom. It's one of my least favourites, actually. This is the Crystal Ice. <coughs> but it does... Let's have a look. Crystal Ice, this has been repotted a couple of times. Last time I uh, did a video on that one. Um, it... it it, this is like a, a, a full year bloomer but you, you, I do find that they do need like a, a rest and a tidy up a lot of these strips that I've got on here had that, that mite really badly and I've took all the leaves off that had the mite on them and, uh, and I keep spraying it I spray it like about once a week just to make sure I'll probably leave it for a bit now because I do think the spray in itself does cause problems and it, it, it can do because I'm coming over here to this Brugmansia and you can see this how this leaf begun to curl 
and a couple of them have begun to curl. Well, I look that up and it said that's systemic insecticides for you. Now this is an absolute martyr to to red spider mite and uh, it just completely wiped it out last year. So I'm hoping this year we're going to be spider mite free. So <coughs> where are we? Ava, Ava Orantiaca variety, a punk tartar. We did a video on that one. That's still in bloom there. That's still a lovely bloom. It's an unusual one. I'm quite proud of that. Somebody told me, I think it was Terry, told me that uh, he never seen one. Or he hardly ever sees it over over where he lives. So uh, I'll take some credit. I know I'm, I'm normally the one that seems to kill them all, but uh, I'll take some credit for that. I'm still waiting for this Epidendrum Comet Valley Orange Star to bloom. I had it blooming two years ago, and then I killed it nearly. <laughs> Obviously, it's not dead. It's about to bloom, so hopefully, we've got at least two spikes on that. So hopefully, uh, that will be in bloom for a long time. The Nobly, like when I first started doing YouTube, which seems like absolutely forever ago, but it was only still a few months ago. I did a video on this particular Dendrobium Nobly, and this one is, I think it was how, how to rebloom them. I think I've just knocked a bud off, never mind. Uh, but that one's come back into bloom again, and there's, I think there's a new uh, cane coming up at the bottom there. And um, that's just another of the star class variety. Another Pelagonium, quite a nice deep kind of pink and red in the middle there. Quite like that one. I did repot these uh, Venus fly traps, and they did sulk. Actually, they're ready for a bit more water. They sulk for quite a while, and I thought, oh my goodness, have I ever done something wrong? And then they finally come back with some new leaves and some new pictures. So I expect that. Uh, I divided them as well. This pot's not done quite as well, and this pot keeps wanting to send up little uh, flower spikes, so I keep cutting them off. And eventually, if I get the idea, and then send some leaves up. Um, not quite in bloom yet. Another one. Th this was a Pelagonium that was completely, and again, I did videos on this. It was completely ravaged by some kind of virus. And uh, I took just about the only healthy looking stem that was left, took a couple of cuttings from it, and here we go, and it's about to bloom again. There's the other plum area there with some new leaves on it. So whether I'll get some, some blooms on that or not this year, I don't know, we shall see. It's still my first year with plum area. So I think that's it for in, indoors, what's in bloom indoors at the moment. At this particular time in April there's quite a few things to come um, but I can only do it when I can do it and uh, I think I will hand you over to my outside self and we'll have a look at some of the things in the garden that are in bloom. So this is Acer Japonica Aureum it's a really nice slow growing uh, yellow leaved variety. I know Orium I think means gold but uh, I think that's probably pushing it a little bit. Um, you can't quite see the label there but I'll put a pop-up on screen. Uh, it, it's really slow growing. It has like these pink kind of sepals when it, the leaves first open. It's not one for autumn colour but I really like the freshness of it at this time of year. This is Skimia rubella. I showed this in the last uh, What's Blooming in March video. I just wanted to show the flowers really and it does have some fantastic uh, yellow, uh, sorry, red buds as well as some berries through the winter. So the very common wildflower that we have here in the UK, this is known as Forget-Me-Not. Uh, Forget-Me-Not because, you know, it's very hard to forget it because it comes up every year. Um, it's an annual, it, it, it doesn't, you know, you're not getting the same plants up each year, but it seeds absolutely crazily, but they're very, very easy to pull up. And you can also see there a cultivated variety of a cornflower. So this is false Solomon seal. It's not very nice to look at, uh, but you grow this basically for its absolutely knockout fragrance. You know, you can smell it from all over the garden. And I'll just whiz you past the... Magnolia stellata, which is still in bloom in April as it was in March. It's definitely always worth a look at it. Actually, this is the best it's ever bloomed, I think, because I did move it a couple of times, which uh, which doesn't help, obviously. So moving on to my camellia. I don't think it was properly in bloom when we looked in March. It's kind of going over a little bit now, uh, but it's all it's always worth a look at a camellia. 
I, I have got one actually which is a fragrant one which opens really really early but uh, it's too small yet for any kind of proper blooms so this is a really common shrub in our country this is a, a very hardy berberis it's an orange berberis uh, but what a lot of people do they, they tend to prune it at the wrong time of year you've got to prune it straight after the uh, the flowers have dropped off uh, if you do it any other time then it just will not it will not bloom for you um, it's but should put on a fantastic show this year as well now this always puts on an absolutely fantastic show in spring and in autumn and uh, you can see here it's actually just I filmed this about a week ago and it was just before it burst out into bloom and this is actually a pear tree and they, t they say plant pears for your ears but we, we waited a couple of years before the pears came but it's worth it just as an ornamental tree fantastic uh, blooms on it and brilliant brilliant autumn colour so well worth planting pears whether it's for your ears or for yourself and the final thing I've got to show you today is this happy accident. It's a hosta, obviously, but some of the forget-me-nots have just kind of self-seeded amongst the uh, the hosta leaves there, and it looks really, really nice. And it's topped uh, with a... It's another hardy shrub called Choisia Aztec Pearl. And again, it's just about to, to burst forth with its blooms, but it does have fantastic fragrance. Definitely worth getting.